This is No BS Job Search Advice Radio, episode 1800. I'm your host, Jeff Alton, the Big Game Hunter, and welcome. No show is close to this number of podcasts in the job search category in Apple Podcasts. It has been an amazing ride. So far, I've been on the air for more than nine and a half years, and later this year, episode 2000 will coincide with approximately the time of the 10th anniversary. I want to make sure I had a good interview today. Uh, it's a little more than a half hour, as I recall, the way this show will lay out, talking about job search during a crisis. Now, we recorded this during COVID-19, uh, so it has you know, the currency to it in the interview. But the tactics that we talk about are that much more intensified at times like these. And I just want to make you hear it, or have you hear it, I should say, because frankly, it's tough out there. There are more people who lost their jobs over the last six weeks than were out of work during any single period of the Great Recession of the 1930s. That's an incredible amount of jobs lost. Now, there were fewer people in the United States then, and proportionally, you'd have to have 60 million people out of work in total to equal that. But you know, we're probably about two-thirds of the way there with you know, pre-existing unemployed and those who've lost their jobs in the last six weeks. So I want to do a show. Anthony Johnson of Delverisk uh, was very happy to step in and talk with me about it. I do hope you find the show helpful. When things open up, I do hope you're able to land something quickly. And... I'll just simply say, if you need one-on-one coaching from me, if you'd like one-on-one coaching from me, go to my website, thebiggamehunter.us. Number one is you can schedule time for a free discovery call or schedule time for coaching. There's even more in the blog there about job hunting. And by the way, if you have a question for me, you can ask it at wizio.com. That's W I S I O dot com forward slash the big game hunter. I'd be happy to answer your questions. And with that, let's get going, okay? As many of you know, from time to time, I bring on an expert to talk about some aspect related to job search, hiring more effectively, managing and leading, workplace related stuff, you know? And I've got one here today. He and I have been having a great time in our conversations before recording this, which is why we're recording now. So, Anthony, why don't you introduce yourself and let people know who you are, okay? Awesome. Thank, thank you, Jeff. Um, so, my name is Anthony Johnson. I'm a managing partner with Delverisk. Um, I've historically been in cybersecurity, and I've been an executive at organizations like J.P. Morgan, um, Fannie Mae, where I ran all of cybersecurity. So, I spent a lot of time with hiring, building teams, and um, helping people to grow in their careers. So, thanks for having me. And what did you want to be when you grew up? <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know what I would necessarily wanted to be. Um, I, I, I think I just wanted to do something that I, I loved. Um, and so something I, I could get passionate about. So, I'm glad you found it. Uh, so, folks, as I'm, I'm recording this, or as we're recording this, it's in the middle of the COVID crisis. And that's really what we're going to talk about. Not COVID, of course, but job hunting in the midst of a crisis. Because it's not the same as a traditional job search, or even in the midst of an economic recovery. Or, you know, I'm someone who's worked in search for more than 40 years and filled lots of positions. And I've seen a lot, and it seems to be getting more intense as one crisis follows another. So we're going to talk about how to job search in the middle of, of a crisis of some sort that's really affecting the economy. So, Anthony... There's so much we can talk about here. Where do you think we ought to start? What's your background of either finding consulting work or job search during a crisis? And how did you go about doing it? Yeah, so um, so I think that, what, that something is really, really important to, to consider is that as people, as individuals, we don't actually spike up on like, hey, we're super productive one day. And like when as we build skills and build build our networks and relationships, those are things that, that maintain, as long as we're maintaining them, they maintain value. Um, and so part of it, part of the reason why, you know, the company has continued to be successful, why we're actually still hiring now is because we are actively engaged in ecosystems, actively continually uh, to, to learn. 
Um, in the overall market right now, you're seeing a lot of companies pausing, firing, hiring. They're, they're, they're trying to get a sense of the world, which is very indicative of that first first uh, pause of, of, of how organizations think about a crisis, right? Like they got to assess what's kind of going on right now. It's kind of like um, in the kids game where they suddenly go freeze. Yes. They stop exactly where they are. They look around. Everyone's horrified yep. and they don't know what to do first. So they just stick exactly where they are yeah. uh, with their hands up in different directions, their mouth open or shut as it might be. It's really, and I'm, do, I'm explaining it in a way that's designed to be um, visual for it's those true. of you who wind up listening to it, but it's true. Absolutely. And, and that's where organizations are. They're, they, 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 they're frozen. You know, they don't want to make any dramatic changes until they figure out what's on the other side of the crisis. Because there's life before the crisis, there's life in the crisis, and then there's life afterwards. And so everyone's trying to figure this out. And that's really, really important for job seekers to understand where they're at in the arc. Um, and it's not that their skills are suddenly not, not in demand. It's, it's a pause. Um, and so, so, you know, how do you relate to that pause? And it's funny. I, I had done something talking about a pause. Uh, and that's the initial phase in what happens in the crisis. Everyone stops where they are and freezes. Yep. And the idea is you want to be the person who pauses Yep. And, and has their senses and awareness about them to look around and notice what's going on and what's not going on. Or yeah. going on. So that you're the one who's out there uh, making connection. That, 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 that's exactly it. And, and I, I think something that a lot of people often miss in, in, the, in the pause, if you will, right? Whether it's a crisis or a, a, an event um, that's happening more at a micro at an organization is that um, there's one of two things can happen. You can either learn a lot and grow in that pause, or you're literally going to freeze with everyone else and not, not grow. But what that means is you have other people who are progressing. They are, they're going to make a lot of other different types of decisions. It could be a skill set that they're suddenly you know, doubling down on or expanding their network or, or reaching back out to people, right? Um, one of the things that's been going on right now I've been talking and connecting with people that I haven't spoken to in just a number of years. And it's just because we're deliberately reaching out, deliberately saying, hey, how are you doing? It's been a while. I have no ask. I just want to check in and see how you're doing. And why does that work? Why is it that just making the call or doing the email or text, why does that work in opening the conversation again? Yeah, so I think that it works. And I, I think that it's, it's impactful because – as long as it's authentic, right? Authenticity, p p um, being real, you know, connecting out with somebody and say, hey, I don't, I'm not asking you for anything, I'm just checking in, are you doing well? Because when we receive that, it feels kind of good of like, man, I, I remember, oh, that's really nice. Just, you didn't even ask me for anything? Oh, I, you know, it's just that it creates that, that social loop a little bit. And, and, um, and that carries through in so many different ways, not just on the immediacy, but long-term, it helps I think define who you are a bit. You know, one of the things I've said to people I coach now is there's a, the best time of the year for networking is the Christmas run up between Thanksgiving and yeah. Christmas. It is so easy to reconnect because everyone's the holiday spirit. You know, you say, Hey, it feels like it's been a hundred years since we last spoke. How's it going? Yeah. Unfortunately, when we have a time like this, it's the same thing in that people appreciate being contacted, especially when there's no ask involved. It's not like say, hey, you hear about any jobs? It, 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 exactly, right? But what, what it does is it, it also puts you in the mind space. Of, of, you know, you get a little bit of that mind space with people as well, where it's, you know, um, as you're kind of thinking, as, as, as the world moves along, if something pops up, they're like, oh, wow, actually, I, I think I might know somebody. Actually, I haven't talked to them in a while. Actually, I, I talked to them two days ago, oddly enough. I should connect you guys. It's, it's amazing how, I don't want to say coincidental life is, but it really is, a, you know, this string of events. Um, and so maintaining the power of a network, maintaining those relationships, checking in on people, being authentic, um, those really, really um, matter. And then being methodical on skill sets. Like, how do I grow? What are the new things I'm going to do or book I'm going to read or whatever that is? 
I'm going to pause on network because I know people don't network and treat it like it's a career move. Yeah. So you want them to really network? Really? <laughs> <laughs> it, and it, it's so it's so wild. So one of the things, so I've always done this mentorship thing inside my uh, organizations. And one of the skill sets we specifically taught was networking. How do you network with purpose, right? And it's not just going up and, 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 and you know, meeting random people. It's adding value. It's, it, it's being somebody they're like, man, we want them at the table. We, want, we need you here like, to be part of the conversation. Um, and thus, what kind of value can someone add in networking? Yeah, so, so it's a great question. And there's a lot of different kinds, right? Sometimes it's going to be a specific expertise. It might be, uh, you know, um, I'll, I'll make it up like in the IT world, you have a specific skill set of a software. Like, great. It could be a diverse opinion. It could be, hey, you know what? I've seen that or I've experienced that or, I've, you know, I have a different thought. The reality is, is nobody ever has the perfect answer. There's never a perfect answer. There's an answer that we think is good today and it might totally blow up. Um, and so by getting a bunch of people, having a diverse conversations, having a bunch of people at the table in their network group, you, get, you, you, you generally can make more informed decisions um, from, from different perspectives. It's funny, when I got married in the past, I, I'm not on my first wife, I just want to be clear about that. Uh, there was a service that was done where um, the rabbi who performed the service took two candles out. And he talked about how individually, you know, very bright, but when you put them together, they burn much, much brighter together. And thus, the power of the network is really about information, relationships, and, you know, statistics are always very clear. 70% of positions are filled as a result of networking. 70% 70 of the 70%, 49%, come as a result of introductions to people that your network knows who you don't have a clue about. Absolutely. And and I think it's also the same on, on, on promotions internally, right? Uh, a lot of times companies think, or they say, well, you know, we got this really great elaborate promotion process, and those are all true. But what really happens in, in, oftentimes is there's a small group of people, and they're having a conversation, and they're like, you know what, I think Sarah would be amazing. Yeah, actually, she, she did some great work, and she's just part of this ecosystem. And then the next thing you know, Sarah's on the promotion panel, and it's really interesting how that works out. Yeah, it's sponsorship and champions, not just simply a mentor. Absolutely. Mentors is one level. They give you advice. Yep. It's, it's free. It tends to have the advantage of you know, supporting the organization that you're associated with. There are exceptions to that, but most of the time you're picked as a mentor because you're going to tell the company line and keep people in, in line. Yeah, rather absolutely. Than, but uh, fundamentally, it's great to be in situations where you're championed within that organization yeah. or outside of it, wherever it is. Yeah. Exactly. And that's where I think that sponsorship coaching, those are really, really, um, really powerful and meaningful because what you have, and the reason why, you know, you have the hat on coach, I, I love, I love the aspect of it, of it, right? Because a coach is going to tell you things that you might not want to hear, right? Um, and it's really just a matter of, are you going to be able to process that? Um, and, and, and actually grow from it. And it's the same exact thing in looking at, um, looking at, getting a new role or, or, or interviewing in a time of a crisis, right? Having somebody who can say, listen, why don't you go ahead and, and also a mock interview and then having someone tell you, wow, okay, that's not going to show up so well. We talked a little bit about backgrounds and like presentation, like a lot of different things come, come into play. So getting someone who's going to give you meaningful feedback, um, really, really important. So we're talking about, how to initially operate in the crisis, but there's bigger opportunities out there, like yeah. brand. Build your brand so that people find out about you. And how do people do the brand building? How, how should you go about it during a crisis to allow people to discover you? Because yeah. my, my thing is always, I, I want people cutting the line rather than you know diving into the pond with all the other fish trying to all get on the hook. Yeah, no, that, that, that's, that's a really, really great point, right? Brand is so important because, um, you know, when you enter a crisis or, or there's an event, if you have a strong brand, that's going to help carry you through, right? And it's, 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 it's this distinction of if somebody doesn't have or hasn't maintained a strong brand or hasn't started to build their personal brand and they're entering, they, they just got a lot of more work to do. 
And so how are they, whether it's on, on social media sites, platforms, blogs, things like LinkedIn, articles, Medium, pushing content, pushing thought leadership, taking your experiences, which a lot of times people will say, you know what, nobody wants to hear from me. Well, well it's the lie you tell yourself. It is. It's in, and, you know, we, when you, one of the, I, I've been posting a lot on, on LinkedIn. Um, and, you know, that's been part of our overall just brand building for the company and for myself. And I would say that most of the content, uh, most of the feedback that I get is not actually on anything cyber security specific or related. It really is about, wow, you really showed a human side. That was awesome. That resonated with me. Um, and you're like, oh, okay, that's, I want to do more of that, right? I want to build more authentic relationships. And that helps um, as you build your brand, which ultimately helps getting jobs. And there's an interesting phenomena with authenticity. Uh, you can't vomit out authenticity. No. Because <laughs> people will, will push you away. But yeah, once you have the relationship, it seems to be much different. It, that's true. And what you're going to find, and it, it's, it feels uncomfortable at first, right? Um, you know, I've had a lot of other senior execs be like, are you sure? Dude, I read your post, kind of interesting, a little, little personal. But then I look at, no joke, I remember this one um, where, where I, I specifically spoke about some of the challenges of, of um, in a crisis, actually, very specific, of how everyone is pretending that we're all super happy and everything's perfect, right? And like, hey, I had a really rough day. And it's okay to show the people you had a rough day and be like, listen, I'm struggling today and just being authentic. And I got a lot of feedback from people who were like, I feel the exact same way. Thanks for saying that because I've never had somebody really senior expose themselves in that, in, in you know, that, that level of vulnerability. And man, it just felt great just to kind of be part of it. And, and you don't have to be senior. You can be, at, you know, at any level and add value um, by being authentic. And I think back to um, all those internet marketers who have their ads of them standing there with the women around them and the Rolls Royce next to them that they rented for the hour yeah. to try and convey that they had the great life that you exactly. know they don't have. It, 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 exactly, right? And it, it's, it's really interesting when you look at like the uber successful people. Like, like Warren Buffett is fascinating to me, right? He still buys his breakfast at McDonald's and change. Like, it's amazing to me, right? He still has the same house from, you know, when he originally bought it. Um, and he's just, he just does his thing. And you don't, he doesn't live that flash life. But his brand is one of adding value, where he's constantly reading, constantly learning, right? I think he spends, I forget how many hours a day reading reports. Um, and so it's really, really fascinating where his brand is to add value to people, provide those, you know, interesting in insights. And people want to listen to him. And I think that, as, as, as we do that more and more, it makes us more palatable as we go and look for the next job or look for a next opportunity. Or the career that you want. Because I'm going to think bigger than job on this one. Yeah. Because your brand is really who you are in your life. Yeah, I agree. And, and thus, you know, I talk in terms of being the big game hunter. I trademarked that term years ago. I'm still doing headhunting. And it works very well now as a coach. Because I want to help people play big. Uh, and so often people, they keep themselves down. They buy the lion from their employers. They believe they're unimportant. unimportant. Yep. They're put in the box. Yeah. <laughs> nice box. Stay in the box. Don't ask for anything. Stay in the box. And as a job hunter, especially now, you want to be in a situation where people are looking for you. Yep. The, you know, the philosophy, and, and I want to claim credit that I was one of many people who contributed to this. The attitude that organizations have is that the active job hunter is inferior to the one that they find. That if they recruit this person, it's a superior candidate than, than the one who's active, which is in a crisis is terrible yeah. because you may be out of work as so many millions are right now. But when you're in the position of being pursued, when you're being hunted, and it's just because of what your brand says, that they're finding you on LinkedIn because the profile is keyword optimized. And yep. by the way, you haven't made it seem like you're out of work. Now, don't put a completion date there because the algorithm yeah. disadvantages you. If you have a completion date for your employer, if you're the person that they hunt out, they think you're better, even though they could have found your resume on a job board. 
it, it, it's fascinating. And there's in it's it's almost like um, you know, um, like a craps table. I'll, I'll, I'll say like gamblers are very superstitious. Like I, I, there's a lot of recruiters who are very superstitious as well. Like oh well, you know, we, they they got that, so we can't do this. And then you're like that. I don't, I don't think those two things add up like two plus three does not equal four, right? Like that's, that's different here. Um, and so as, but, but, but being somebody who's either being recruited um, or even like you, like you mentioned, not just the job, but your overall career and how you kind of think about it. Th- think about that. The more you spend on uh, more time you spend on building your brand, that gives you opportunities, not just for the interview process of a job, but also for the process of building your own company building your own thing that you want to do, right? And so I look at my career a little bit. I spent a lot of time, my entire career has been in cybersecurity, but I spent a lot of time talking with founders, talking with you know, software service companies, and just building a network. And that, not my deep expertise in cyber, the networking and the relationship building and the authenticity is what enabled us to get our first set of clients. And it, it's what it, it's enabled us to have fully inbound demand on the services that we provide, right? Nobody has ever said, hey, Anthony, you're super smart. Can you guys come do this? It's, wow, we heard that you really care when you engage. And I trust Joe. Joe's working with you. Like, we need to work with you. Um, and it's, it matters a lot. There's a great story I read today about the Yankee baseball player, Aaron Judge. And he was referred to as the new Derek Jeter in an interview done with Damian Lillard from the Portland Trailblazers. And Judge laughed about it. But then he continued on by saying, you know, complimentary things about him. uh, And, of course, said, you know, one of the advantages of being a Yankee ball player is you get to be around the legends of the game. You get the Jeters, the Pettits, the Reggie Jacksons, all these great ball players they bring in from time to time. So you have a chance to hang out with them yeah. and learn at a different level than players on other teams learn. These are the greats of the game. And you have a yep. chance to hang out with the legends. And folks, if you have a chance, and by the way, he goes on to talk about, and for the young ball players coming up behind me, I know I'm that for them. Yeah. So I make time for them. So it's a two-way street, folks. You want to be in contact with people who are ahead of you on the curve, and you want to be in contact with the people behind you on the curve. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and and what, what's really funny, though, is um, when we realize that the people that are behind us on the curve, someday they're going to be the decision makers. They're going to be the ones, right, and what, what, what's important is how did you help them as well? How did you grow their ecosystem? How, how are you adding, again, adding value in just different, different meaningful ways? Um, and when you, when you get out of the, the, get away from the headspace of like, hey, it's transactional and you're just giving and, and sharing, um, you get a lot of joy out of it, but it really converts, right? It really does um, make a big difference in your overall career mobility. Oh. Um, and so I think those are all important things and it's kind of the foundation of, of, of this topic, right? Of, you know, in order to be successful in a crisis, in, in taking on a new role or starting companies or whatever that is, you have to, you have to be thinking about that long-term longevity, that long-term value add. Um, and that, that, that matters in a big way. And I know everyone's habit because they're frightened yeah. and they need that job is to go transaction. What do I do today? How can I do this today? Uh, how, how can I get an interview? And I understand, and it's important. And you have to put seeds in the ground that you haven't put in before. Yeah, a- a- absolutely, right? And I, I think that the thing is, is that it's not, it's not just an or, right? I think that, you know, job hunters, t- people who are looking for a role in a crisis, um, there's definitely going out, talking to people, just making sure people know what you do, applying, doing all of those types of things, um, but then spending another eight hours and adding content, spending, you know, adding a voice, you know, pushing some sort of a thought piece out there or learning, learning, you know, building up a skill set. It is really, really important to to almost say that, especially in a crisis, we're dealing with these, these things, but you've got to be able to just double down and, and really win. So you, you, instead of being frozen, right, you move fast, 
um, you, you just need to grow. So the one that, the one place I'll disagree with you about is and learn something. Not just simply, or, it originally proposed it as or learn. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I, 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 I want you I, doing both, folks. Yes, I know, and that's what I mean. Or I, so sorry, I should have said and learn something. I think you have to be doing doing both. Um, although I would submit that you probably have a good, you know, sixteen hours. I love Arnold Schwarzenegger's say, you know, quote where people he's like, you know, you, you can get six hours of sleep, and he's like, well, you know, sometimes people say they need eight. He's like, my advice is sleep faster. Right, like <laughs> maximize the time, um, and and really say, you know, how do I grow? How do I do these things? Um, and just and, and push on it. So, absolutely. Hey, oh, I gotta ask you, what haven't I asked you about yet that we really should share with the folks sure. that you think would make a difference? Yeah. So, um, we spend a lot of time talking about brand um, presence, and the one thing we talked about before we actually just kind of kicked off, uh, kick this off, was the notion um, of also just kind of present, you know showing up and how you show up, um, you know, being able to convey your presence over a video conference, um, perhaps in, in, in a crisis mode. And one of the things that you mentioned, which is something I think is just really, really imperative, is to make sure that you are being authentic, right? When, when you're being interviewed, when, when you're having a conversation with somebody, it's not just about being this perfect robot that knows all the answers, right? We're human. Ask them a human question, like, check in with them. If it's in the middle of a crisis, how are you doing? Like in a meaningful way, right? Um, making sure that you are able to convey that level of, of realness. Um, companies don't want to hire robots. They want to hire people because people care. People care about the product. They care about the customers. They care about how everything shows up at the end, right? Robots don't care. Um, and so I think more and more in a crisis, you're going to see people looking to hire people. And there was a, a story I told Anthony earlier about someone I coached who was on a final interview. And when they say, so you have any questions for us, the first question was, how are you doing with all of this? How's it going around here? How's everyone responding to it? But more importantly, how are you doing? Your family okay? And it made such a huge difference in the connection between the people, uh, between the two of them, because fundamentally, when firms hire Competence is only one variable. The other variables all add up to trust. That's exactly it. They want to trust someone. And when you don't care, it's hard to make the connection. Exactly. Thank you, Thank you for bringing that back up. I appreciate it. Anything else we missed today? No, I think that was it. That was, this, was, this has been absolutely great. It's fun. Um, you know, I think that, you know, as people are looking for new opportunities in a crisis, just kind of, um, doubling down, um, recognize that, you know, the frustration, the concern, like you're not alone. Those are all normal things. Um, and then how do you just kind of work through that? So I think those are really important. And, and folks, before I, I bring Anthony back on for a final thing, I just want to say a lot of what we talk about are things you should be doing in a search anytime. Because the reality is it's just cubed <laughs> during a crisis where, where the job ads have disappeared. And now it's a question of planting seeds in the ground so that when things start to lift, you're top of mind. Great interview. I'm glad we made an adjustment today. Anthony, how can people find out about, uh, more about you and Delvris, D-E-L-V-E? R-I-S-K. -E -E. Yep. Um, so I would say, you know, shoot us a note on, uh, on, on LinkedIn. Mention that you saw, um, saw the interview on, on either on the – on, on YouTube or listen to it on the podcast, um, but happy to connect. And um, thanks for having, having me on. It's been great. So that's today's show. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, here are a few more ways to get information and advice from me. First of all, there's my website, which is TheBigGameHunter.us. I have more than 8,000 blog posts there that you can watch, listen to, or read that will help you find your next job. In addition, if you're interested in my coaching you, at the site, there's a button there that says Schedule. Schedule time for a free discovery call. Schedule yourself in for coaching, interview preparation coaching, salary negotiation advice, coaching related to hiring more effectively, managing and leading, helping you to be a better executive in your organization, and overall being a better employee of your firm. If you have questions for me, you can ask them at wizio.com forward slash the big game hunter. That's W I S I O 
dot com forward slash the big game hunter. The price at Wizio is less than one third of what I'm charging my website. And I'm doing this because I want to benefit my subscribers here and on YouTube and only you're going to know about it. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash the big game hunter. Mention that you watched or listened to my content. I like knowing I'm helping folks. Once we're connected, you know, it's nice to hear from you. I'd love to hear from you from time to time about how I'm helping. You can also watch me on TV. Did you know that? If you have a Fire TV or a Fire Stick, download the Job Search TV app for Apple TV, Roku, Sony, Samsung, like 90 different TV platforms. You can watch me on either Zingo TV or BingeNetworks.tv. On YouTube, subscribe at JobSearchTV.com and have access to thousands of videos I've created. I'll be back tomorrow with more. And in the meantime, I hope you have a great day. Be great!